When you think about New York, what do you think about? You think about super tall and super slender towns. These are now shaping New York's skyline with a number of these popping up around New York. And New York has actually achieved a crowning jewel with the most slenderest tower in the world at a ratio of one to 24. And that is the Steinway Tower of 111 West 57th Street. The street that it's on, West 57th Street, has actually been nicknamed Billionaire's Road as a number of these have popped up along this road, making it synonymous for these super tall, super slender towers. What makes it more magnificent is the fact that these towers tower up so high and they have sights over Central Park. The design of super tall, super slender towers requires engineering at its finest. So let's find out a little bit about the engineering behind 111 West 57th Street and what makes it an engineering marvel. What is a slenderness ratio? A slenderness ratio is the width of the base of the tower divided by its height. And the Steinway Tower is only 18 meters wide, yet it manages to achieve a towering height of 435 meters. It comprises of 86 floors, but only 58 apartments. So the price of these apartments need to be exorbitant to cover the cost of such an excessive construction. Currently, the cheapest apartments are selling at $14 million, while the double-story penthouses have an asking price of $66 million. So how were the engineers able to achieve such a magnificent height on such a small footprint? If we have a look at the floor plan, we can see that the east and west walls are pretty much solid, with a central core in the middle, essentially forming a H pattern. We can also notice that there's only two lift shafts for such a tall tower. And to allow this to be achieved, they essentially had to have the primary residence lift in the same lift shaft as the service lift, essentially double stacking these lifts. This allows them to have greater floor area on a smaller footprint for the lifts. And if we have a look across to the stair shaft, they've also done something there as well. As you can see, it's quite skinny. So essentially to be able to achieve that, they've got a mid height landing and the story floors are slightly higher. So this allows them to go up to mid height come back around and back across, essentially reducing the footprint that the stair takes up as well. If we're now looking at the north and south sides, we can see there is a mega column in there, essentially a big column attached to outriggers. Outriggers are one of the items that the engineer has in his tool chest to be able to stiffen up the structure. As the name suggests, they essentially provide additional lever arms on discrete locations up the tower, stiffening up this design to the extremities of the tower as much as possible. And these outriggers are discrete, so only limited to the number of floors that they're located on. The Steinway Tower has three of these, and they've actually limited to the plant floors. And the plant floors are not concerned about floor space or floor area, as their primary service is to service the tower above and below it by providing air conditioning, electrical services, and hot water systems. Additionally, on these floors, it helps stiffen up the structure as well, they also provided additional stiffening in the east-west direction as well. So this not only stiffens it up in that direction, but also reduces the stresses on the header beams. They would be highly critical in any design for an engineer. This allows them to achieve the stiffness that they need to out of the structure while only limiting the impact minimally to the plant design floors and not the valuable residential locations. The primary concern of any engineer when they're designing these super skinny towers is the human perceived comfort. And this is a consideration of the acceleration felt inside the tower. When the tower is blown by the wind, it will move a fair way, but for that structure to feel solid, it needs to do that slowly. And the ISO standards give us some requirements to be able to design for this. And we're able to reduce the amount of acceleration the tower sees through a number of different ways. And one of the primary ways they have done this on the Steinway Tower is through tune mass dampeners. Tune mass dampeners are one element that each engineer has in his tool chest to be able to limit the accelerations felt throughout the tower. As the name suggests, these are specifically tuned for the dynamics behind each structure and the forces felt in each direction. The Steinway Tower is actually home to two of these of the pendulum variety, hung by cables or hydraulics that allow massive weights to lag behind the movement of the structure. And as they are lagging behind the movement of the structure, 
This limits the amount of oscillations that the tower sees, so it dampens it, so the oscillations stop much quicker. And also as they're lagging behind, it limits the acceleration inside the structure. As the momentum laws state that there's an equal and opposite reaction, so as we're rocking backwards and forwards and the massive weights are lagging behind, this is slowing down the movement that's felt inside the building. The two tune mass dampeners that are inside 111 West 57th Street are weighing in at 850 tonnes and 350 tonnes. And they're specifically tuned for the winds felt in each direction, with the winds being strongest in the north-south direction, hence the heavier weight at 850 tonnes. Another element that's in the engineer's tool chest that is adopted at the Steinway Tower is shaping the tower to prevent the wind loads that are imparted upon the structure. I've actually done a full episode on shaping buildings to prevent wind loads, which I'll link in the below description. But essentially the Steinway Tower has a number of different floors which allows airs to flow through it. This prevents eddies that form in behind the structure. As we can see from this wind tunnel test, the wind is flowing past the structure forming eddies in behind the, the design that's causing damaging effects on the structure through the suction force and it also causes the structure to also to rock backwards and forwards. Through the porous floors that the Steinway Tower has on two locations, it allows wind to flow through the structure. This severely hampers the wind from forming these vortexes. And this is commonly known as confusing the wind greatly limits the force that's imparted upon the structure from the wind loads and reduces the design loads that the structure sees. The upper floors of the Steinway Tower are also porous as well. The upper floors are only there for servicing the tower. They're allowing for window cleaning equipment and for the tune mass dampener. I hope you enjoy this insight behind some of the engineering required to produce the slenderest tower in the world. If you did, hit that like button. And if there are any other towers you'd like me to cover in detail, please comment below. And if you haven't subscribed at this point, hit the subscribe button. And to get all updates, you need to ding the bell. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.